Thank you so much for invitation. Um, so I I want to tell you something about symmetric products of PG category and its relation with the notion of semi-orthogonal decompositions. So um, let me first explain my original motivation of studying this subject. So the original question in my mind was the following. So I consider the smooth projective surface S and assume that the derived category of coherent sheaves on S has some semi-orthogonal decomposition. Then does that derived category of its Hilbert scheme of points, does this again have an um, SOD? That was my um, question. And the first example, my favorite example is the, uh, on the right, the blow up of a surface at a point. In that case, it's well known that you have an SOD consisting of two components. The first one is the original surface S, and then you have additional um, um, components of direct category of points. And it comes from the exceptional curve. And then um, my question is if it's Hilbert scheme again has some interesting so these or not. And recently, I gave a um, very interesting answer to this question in this particular case. So I consider a silver scheme of points on S hat, and then its derived category has the following SOD. Um, you have PJ copies of DB of cube N minus J of the original surface, where J moves between zero and n. And here, the number pj is the number of partitions of n, oh, sorry, j. It's a very beautiful formula. And actually, it categorifies the well-known blow-up formula for Euler characteristics. So on the right, please look at the right-hand side. So, sorry the right part of the note. So the categorification, by taking the Euler number of Hochschild homology of each piece of SOD on the left, you recover the following formula for generating function of Euler characteristics. So here on the left-hand side, of, I consider the generating series of Euler characteristics of Hilbert schemes on the floor. And then on the right, I have generating series for the original surface S. And the modification factor is the, um, um, sorry, because um, or equal to one, the following infinite product. And this is exactly the generating series of partitions of natural numbers. So, um, so it's a very beautiful formula. You have some um, like meaning of the coefficient here in terms of um, developing the eta function. Right, this is very interesting. And I gave two proofs of this theorem. The first theorem I, I got was the on the left. So I use the so-called wall crossing diagram that involves many different moduli spaces connecting Hilbert schemes, plus um, modern technology of the so-called categorified whole product. So these are like some complicated machinery that recently developed by Adorario Toda and others. And the wall crossing diagram was originally obtained by Nakajima and Yoshioka. And then I, I combined their work plus um, um, so, so there was a question uh, uh, by Zhonghang Mao about what is the base? Oh, you mean the base field. Um, so this one, I think I have to assume. Um, so let me assume, I mean, for, for this part, so, if you fix n, 
fix n, then um, I work over the field k, where characteristic of k equals to zero or bigger than n. This is enough for fixed n, but if you want to get this kind of, I mean, if you want to consider this kind of generating series, then um, you have to assume the characteristic to be zero. Does this answer to the question? Yeah, good. So the first um, proof uses these modern technologies of um, wall crossing diagram and categorized for product. Um, it's a bit um, complicated, but I after that I found an alternative proof which um, looks a bit simpler. Um, so the second approach uses the so-called direct Markai correspondence that gives us the equivalence between the derived category of the Hilbert scheme with the derived category of the following quotient stack, where the symmetric n symmetric group Sn acts on the n fold product of S by permutation of the components. This is the derived Markai correspondence, and it turns out. The, this uh, this derived category of quotient stack is the it agrees with the so-called symmetric product of the um, derived category of S. And then um, using this observation of derived market correspondence plus um, some de development of the general theory about um, symmetric product of the DG category that gave me an alternative proof for the theorem about SOD for Hilbert scheme on blow up. Uh, so the advantages of the second approach is the following. First of all, um, although the derived Mackay correspondence is very deep result, but once you assume that um, the Remaining proofs are relatively easy compared to the first approach. And then, secondly, I can apply the general theorem about symmetric product of the DG category to other types of the surfaces um, to get various interesting SODs for the Hilbert schemes, not necessarily for blow up. So that's um, my motivation and um, special case of my main result. So let me explain about um, symmetric product of DG categories. So first, um, I want to define the notion of dot product for two G DG categories due to Bondar, Larsen, and Lund. So let's consider a pre-triangulated DG categories. So, um, so in, in this talk, I always assume DG categories to be pre-triangulated, meaning that um, it's their uh, homotopy category is triangulated category, right? So for these pre-triangulated categories, I define the dot product as follows. First, I take the usual tensor product for DG categories. And then I take the category of perfect modules over it. So this is the definition for of dot product. And you can consider enfold dot product of one fixed category D. And then you have natural symmetric group action by permutating the component. Right? So to form the symmetric product of DG categories, um, 
So I first consider the DG category here, which is the DG category of SN equivalent objects on D dot N. Right? So D so um so to, to, to define symmetric product, I need to explain two things. The first one is um, the action of a group on a um, easy category, and then the object, I mean, the equivariant object. So here, quick recap of what these notions are. So given a DG category T, and a finite group G, a G action on T consists of the following data. First, data, a part of the data is a DG auto equivalent row G, which sends an, um, I mean, sorry, for, for each element in G, you, you have a DG auto equivalence of between T. And then the another another part of the data is a natural isomorphism between two functors of the equivalences. On the left, you have composition of rho G and rho H defined above. And on the right, you have rho um, associated to G, G times H. Right? You have um, natural isomorphism between um, these auto-equivalences. And um, it's a pretty te technical, but it's important to be closed and degree zero. And then you have, um, I also require a compatibility of, further compatibility of um, these natural isomorphism, right? So it's basically kind of associativity, right? If, if you have three elements, so maybe I can write this here. So you have row G, row H, row K, then there's two paths to reach row of D times H times K, right? So first compose G, H, and row K, and then compose it. And the other is first compose G and, uh, sorry, H and K, and then compose with K, right? And the compatibility means this operations, I mean, this diagram is commutative, right? So this is the um, notion of uh, G action on uh, DG category. And then given a, uh, given an um, uh, action of a finite group on a DG category, I can define the category, DG category of um, equivariant object that consists of the following objects and morphisms. So the object is a collection, I mean, it's a pair of objects E in T plus collection of isomorphisms um, for, for, for each element in G, where um, IG is an isomorphism between E and rho G I applied to E, which I again assume to be close and degree zero. And then um, I, I also impose some um, like natural compatibility condition with the natural isomorphisms theta G H is. And then the morphisms are commutative diagrams like this. And you have um, um, the morphism between E and F in the original category T, which is compatible with the, um, this IG and Psi G defined equivalent object. So yeah, these are um, the notion of G 
put a box on uh, the, the category and construct some um, equivariant is the category. So I'm uh, going back to the dot ns dot product you had um, um natural symmetric group action on n fold dot product and then I can form its equivariant category. And then um Santa Capranov defined the symmetric product um, of D as follows. So first you take n fold dot product of D and then take its SN equivariant category. And then I take its perfect modulus. So this is the definition of symmetric product. And, and you you saw that like I take part everywhere, and the reason is that like like we want to um how to say keep good properties of the category under these operations. And you can see that this is the correct notion in the foreign I mean, looking at the foreign example. So consider a smooth projective variety X. And there's a um, standard DG enhancement for its derived category of quotient C, not by IX. And then um, you can take the N symmetric product of this DG category. And then if you take um, homotopy category, you get a um, triangulated category. And actually, this one is equivalent to the quotient of stack of this form. So it's from, from this example, I can say that Kanta Kapranov notion is the correct generalization and correct definition of symmetric product for and general DG category. So it's a definition of symmetric product. And if there is no question, I, I can I, I move to the main theorem and its proofs. Okay, so here's the main theorem. So let's consider um let's fix some um, positive integer n and the field k such that characteristic of k is either zero or bigger than n. And let d be a flat triangulated DG category, meaning its homotopy category is triangulated. And assume that the category D has an SOD consisting of A and B. And then the symmetric product of D again has the SOD of the following form. N minus J for symmetric product of A dot product with symmetry J of B. Right, it's very natural and um, simple formula. And you can think of it as a generalization of um, direct sum decomposition for symmetric product of like, direct sum of two vector states. Right? If you if you replace um, D with a vector space, and if you replace um, similar form of decomposition with that it's some decomposition into two vector spaces, then you know the symmetric products of vector spaces have the direct sum decomposition like this. So it's very natural and it's fine. So, so let me explain the idea of the proof. So let me first um, I mean, 
let me focus on the simplest case when n equals to two. The first step is to understand the, um, how, how SODs behave under dot product. So it, it's actually already known from von der Larsen Lund that if you have an arbitrary DG category C, then, and if you have an SOD on D, then C dot product D has an SOD consisting of C dot A and C dot B. So in particular, if you apply this result twice to D dot D, you get the following SOD for D dot D. The first component is A dot, I mean, A dot A, and then you have A dot B, and then third component is B dot A, and the last component B dot B, right? So this is the first step. So, I mean, symmetric products consist of two operations, first taking dot product and then take um, an equivariant category. So this is the first step. And then um, the second step is to understand the equivariant part. So there's a um, beautiful descent theory due to Edakin, which states the following. So consider a DG category with an SOD and assume that he has an finite group action by G. And I assume that G preserves the component A and B. Right, this means that if you restrict the action to A, then it marks to A again. Assuming this, um, and again, theorem says that the equivariant category of T has an SOD consisting of equivariant categories. Right, again, this is very natural and easy to understand. So let's let's look at the um, default dot product of D. So you have um, S2 action on D dot D, and it acts on, it preserves the first factor and the last factor, but it exchanges the two factors in, in the middle. So by, by applying the Erdogan's theorem to this case, you got an um, SOD for sim 2 d where first component, ah, sorry, becomes sim 2 a and the final component becomes sim 2 of D. And so in the middle two terms here, as I said, it's, it's two acts on here by um, um, exchanging the components. So as you can imagine, um, this middle category becomes a single copy of A dot B. Right, this is the uh, like um yeah how how you see um I mean I I think it, it explains the idea for um this theorem which is very like simple and in general case um it it involves a little bit more combinatorics but not that much. So D dot N has an semi orthogonal summand of the following form. I take a direct sum over 
is Sn over S minus J times Sj. You take um, um, equivalent graphics, and then you take sigma applied to n minus j's dot product of a and j's dot product of b. So d dot n has the SOD of this form and where Sn act by um, exchanging the components. Right, and then as you saw above, um, in the case of n equals to two, if you take the its equivariant category, then you just get um, um, like one copy. Something of n minus j of a dot of yeah. this is um a trying of the proof. So are there any questions so far? Yeah. As I as I said in, at the beginning, um like this um theorem is pretty easy. Um, given um, the descent theory. Great. So um, this is the main theorem, and I want to explain the applications of this result. So it's mainly for application to um so db of the uh, db of the um, smooth project you variety. So as I said, if you if you consider a smooth project you variety X and its standard enhancement of db X, then its n symmetric product is db of And the quotient of stacks. Right, so let me start with um, the dimension zero case. So you consider X to be a point, and then symmetric product is on the above computation the quotient of stack point modulo symmetric group. Because you know, and this product of point is just a point, right? So it's just a um, category of SN representations, which has um, PJ irreducible representation. So you have PN copies of of DB of point, where PN is the number of irreducible representations for SN, which is exactly the number of partitions of N. Right? As you will see later, this is how um, these PNs appear in the SOD for Hilbert for Okay, and maybe it's worth mentioning that this is actually just um, direct sum. So it's completely orthogonal. Um, so, the, so dimension one. So you you keep to do the smooth project with power. And note that um Symmetric product of 
DBC is different from DB of the symmetric product of the carbon. And actually, um, Paul Schiff Vandenberg proves the following. So you have, I mean, this is the same as in N of DBC. And then this quotient stack has an SOD consisting of the products of the symmetric product of the car, where um, AI are non negative integers such that their weighted sum is equal to N. Right? It's, it's um, Beautiful combinatorial formula. Symmetric stack on the car. So these are low dimensional cases. And here's the most interesting case of the surfaces. So S denotes the most projective surface. In this case, um, by the derived mass type correspondence due to Hyman and Bridge and King Reed. The sin n of db of s is isomorphic to db of cube n of the sub. This is the um, like, only phenomen phenomenon in dimension two. So, starting from um, Interesting SOD on the surface, you can apply my re main results to produce interesting SODs for the Hilbert scheme. The first example is the blow up. As I said in the introduction part, you have the standard SOD consisting of original surface plus exceptional cut. And then by the derivative matrix correspondence and my main result, this is um Taylor same of n minus j db of s dot product sum of j of db point. And then you apply the computation in the above for the second factor and derive the map by correspondence for the first factor. So you get, I mean, this part becomes PJ copies of the points. This part becomes Hilbert scheme. So you get J copies of. EB of the N minus J of S. Right? So at first sight, like um it wasn't clear the um relation between this number PJ and the like our starting grace of the well just one copy of P. Point, but um, from the um, main my main theorem, it's now clear that um, this number P J comes from the sim J of the point. So this is the first um, application. You you have more interesting SODs for other surfaces. So for example, you can take a real result. Yes. S, S, and this formula or S on the left hand side. Yes, I think S, S hat is the blow up of S. Yes, next formula for Hill. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, S hat. Any other questions? No? Great. 
So um, next example is real the surface. In this case, you have an SOD consisting of two copies of DVC. Right. So you you apply my main theorem. You get sim n minus k dbc dot sim j of dbc. Okay. And then apply the Pursue um, Vandenberg. Um, you get um, so D so D consisting of products of in J of C, actually. Right, and I, um, I want to say one more remark here. So if um, J because of what I call to the genus of the curve, then um, db of simjc further decomposes into um, in smaller than or equal to cc minus one and the Jacobian of the card. So uh, it's a result of Soda. So overall, the Hilbert scheme of points on the root surface has an SOD consisting of um, the products of symmetric product of the card, where number of symmetric product is less now equal to G minus one, and um, some copies of Jacobian. Right, and my my formula for um derived category is um similar to the motivic decomposition um proved by Getz for um, motives of Hilbert schemes on root surfaces. So I have two more examples. Um. Uh, Third one is a uh, toric surface. In this case, the derived category has the so called full exceptional correction. Which means DBS has an um, SOD consisting of DB, several copies of DB of points. Right, then my main theorem tells us that DB of the Hilbert scheme again has a pre exceptional collection of longer length. And you know, you have explicit combinatorial formula for the length of pre exceptional collection. So the final one is, um, is also interesting. So it's a kind of pathological example for the derived category. So it's, it is known that there exists some surface S such that its derived category has um, exceptional collection plus the um, plus the um, it's semi orthogonal complement such that A is not there as a category, but its Hochschild homology vanishes. Such a category A is called a crush phantom. Right? 
And now there are lots of such examples for the view of the surface. And the, um, the original one is Um, due to um, I think yeah um yeah sorry there are there are many examples of such surfaces typically of general type. And my claim is that um, so here, if we consider symmetric product of A, which sits inside BB of the Hilbert scheme, it's again a uh, phantom. So um, one might expect that it's a general um, phenomenon like Phenomenon, like if you have plus quantum category, then it seems it's again plus quantum. But um, I couldn't prove, I can't prove that general result, but um, I have to use some special properties of, in this case to, to prove this claim. So there are two key observations. First one is Come from that, that comes from um, the so-called HKR isomorphism. So for any smooth projective variety X, if you take the um, sum of the dimension of um, Poshut homology, it's same as the sum of the um, dimensions of um, base numbers of X. And second observation is that um, the page numbers of if the scheme is determined by the page number of the original surface by get you. So the first one is HKR isomorphism, and second one is get formula. Right, so basically, um, so basically, if starting from the SOD here, if you can extract the, all the batch number of S from this SOD, then it's determined the um, batch number of the Hilbert scheme. And hence, um, like you can see that. I mean, it all already, I mean, it already determines the um, total um, dimension, total dimension of Cossuid homology. Right? So the key point is the observation plus um, how to determine batch numbers of S from this SOD. This is a um, really special phenomenon in the surface case. So you have a hot diamond of the surface, right? And then, so, oh, so if you look at, um, the law that gives batch numbers. Okay. But on the other hand, Hochschild homology looks at the um, col uh, columns. Right, so, and this, oh, sorry, goes. Um, under my assumption, um, homology of S 
is just um, zero x because you you know yeah you have n copies of db points plus something with zero Hochschild homology. So Hochschild homology of S is zero except in um, degree zero. And in degree zero, you have um, L, right? And the center, the middle part is zero's um, Hochschild homology. So follows that you have zero here, zero here, zero here for all the other forms, which implies all all the which numbers here are zero, and you have in the center you have um, L minus two which is um, H11 part, right? Um, so, and then, you know, other other Hodge numbers vanish. So if you look at each each row, you can see that, you know, you can now see that everything, um, as I say, I, I've determined all the big number. First, look at rows and then, uh, so first look at columns and then look at rows, you, you see that um, this kind of SOD determines all the batch number of the surface. And this is a um, very special phenomenon in dimension two, and you you don't you won't get um, um in higher dimensions at least. So um, what this means, um, so this SOD starts here, SOD star determines all the page numbers of S, and that determines Um, all the page numbers of cube n of s, and then we see that um, we already have have enough copies of the of points inside db of cbns to um to generate whole postural homology of the scheme and then it forces the remaining category to have several postural homology i of the cloud phantom is so um yeah that's um all the applications I have and as I said it would be an interesting question if um this is a general phenomena phenomenon starting from some um, non-zero category which had um vanishing homology, one, one can ask if its symmetric products are again large phantoms or not. So yeah, sorry, it's I only I only have 10 minutes left, but I think I stopped here. Thank you for listening. <laughs>